Do not worry. Well, hey, folks. Welcome to episode 34 of Do Not Worry. I'm your host, Anthony, coming to you once again from the heart of Beirut in Jaitewe for a very special episode, folks, featuring the interns. Wave hello, interns. Wave hello to the camera. Hello. How's it going, folks? These are the interns that your Patreon money has been able to help me hire. Uh, we're going to get to meet the interns. We're going to look at their applications. Why did I hire them? Why do I love them so much? We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, before we get into anything, folks, please take a second to like this video, uh, leave a comment, your engagement. Hashtag engagement. This one's for you, Rudolph. It's still for you, my man. Uh, engagement helps the channel like this a lot, so please uh, hit us with a like, hit us with a comment. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet become a Do Not Warrior. Help me get to the 5,000 subscriber mark and consider supporting me on Patreon, uh, helping me pay these lovely intern salaries. Sa interns, do the dance. Do, do the dance. Do, turn on your mics. All right, come on. We're going to do the Patreon dance. All right, on three. Do the dance. Come on. Patreon. Come on. For the patrons. <laughs> we need your patrons, guys. I need your money. So Send. Please pay us. Money. So I can keep paying <laughs> these guys. All right, enough dancing. Sit down. Thank Sit back you. down. Guys, today we got a lot of interesting topics. Number one, we're going to meet the interns. Number two, Dr. Food is back. I know. Okay, it's been two weeks I've been talking about Dr. Food, but honestly, the guy is a factory of content. I could literally talk about Dr. Food every single week. So we're going to go over some Dr. Food. We've got some good shit this week. We're going to touch on a little bit controversy that Joseph Shada found himself in. Uh, and Tufiluk, we're going to talk about his LinkedIn. Tufiluk has a lot of cringe posts on LinkedIn. He's trying to position himself as like this very professional guy who cares about young people not finding jobs. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna call you out, Tufiluk. And uh, number five... Topic number five, we're going to talk about Amaranth. She's a very popular Twitch streamer. She's on OnlyFans. She does some crazy ASMR. We're going to react to some of that together. Uh, before, before we move into that, let me just say a quick thank you to some, some of my lovely patrons. Uh, some of the patrons who have made, again, who have helped me hire these, these interns who are helping me fund my Joseph Shada documentary. Awesome patrons like Noor Jabour. Hello, Noor. Thank you. Uh, Stephanie, it is it. Stephanie, thank you so much. Rana, Rana, you rock. Thank you so much. Uh, Manuel Basile, thank you so much. And Bilal Mughrabi, a new patron, a new addition to the family. Uh, and our superhero patrons, can't forget to mention uh, the awesome Anna, Raya, Ahmad and Layla, Ziad Ashar, you know who you are. Uh, thank you guys so much. The show would not be possible without you. These interns would not be here without you. So they're very thankful. Uh, and without further ado, let's, let's get kicked off with the first topic. Uh, so, folks, topic number one, we're going to meet the interns. We're going to meet the interns. Turn on your mics, interns. Uh, first, I'd like you to, to meet Noor, intern number two. Say hello to Noor. Hello. Uh, I should have introduced you to Elijah, intern number one. Hello. So, uh, let me, why do I have two interns? I told you guys I wanted a Patreon to hire one intern, and now you're here. Like I got two interns. Like, Anthony, what's wrong? Well, folks, I, uh, honestly, I saw their applications, and I wanted to hire both of them. So, I first, I hired Elijah first, okay? Let me tell you how it worked. So I asked, uh, I put up a, an, a post on Twitter, on Instagram, and um, Elijah literally sent his application like within two hours of me posting it, like that same night. So I was like, okay, the guy earns points at least for, for, uh, for being timely, for, for being excited. And then I watched, I watched his video. So let's, let's, let's react to Elijah's application video together. Hi Anthony, I just saw your ad on Instagram and I decided to apply because why the fuck not? Oh, eh, I'm Tashik, I'm showing off my setup. So basically I am a fan of the show, I followed you for a while on Instagram and YouTube. Um, it's been not Elijah on Instagram, but it's me, Eli Ghanime. I am 23 years old, but I look 15. I'm a marketing graduate with a minor in graphic design. I really enjoy editing and shooting stuff, so when it comes to editing skills, the best you could get. I currently work as a marketing specialist at an advertising agency located in Dubai and Dawaime Tis'ala Sitte. So if you were looking for somebody that's full-time, skip this video. <laughs> if not, if it's a part-time gig, like a couple hours a day, I honestly am very interested and I think we could work a lot, like really well together. Thank you for your time. Okay, so full disclosure, I had to cut out. We cut out a, like about 30 seconds of the video where he talks about like his work. I just don't want to get him in any trouble or anything like that. But he, he, 
he seemed I got a very good energy from uh, from Elijah. Uh, he was a fan of the show and he, he sent me DMs before like you've sent me DMs. We've interacted before. So I, I was I, I was a little bit aware of him before from Instagram. Um, I like the fact that he sent this honestly within two hours. Um, I, he, I felt like he, you were a little bit socially awkward, which kind of reminded me of myself. I was like, I like this kid and he, he can help me with Discord. He, he does graphic design. He's like super qualified. So I was more than happy to have him on the team. I hired him like pretty quickly um, the following day. Uh, to turn on, tell us a bit about yourself, Elijah. What, what are your hobbies? Tell the, the folks, like how old are you? I think you mentioned you're 23, but like tell, tell the people about about you well i'm basically 23 and i am graduated in marketing i'm very creative and i'm very fucking awkward so back to you Anthony. he is super awkward and you, you mentioned that you look 15 he does look very young doesn't he look 15 let us know in the comments he's 23 but he looks like a 15 16 year old um so very happy to have elijah on the team he's going to be very helpful in terms of research he's already kicked ass um then later that day i get another email from noor and i'm like ah fuck it's too late but I'm like she sent a video let's check out the video folks as soon as I was done watching the video I was like fuck I need a second intern there's no way I can let this person go uh so you guys will know what I'm talking about once you watch it here is Noor's video application which she completely fucking crushed ناس جاهلين وصفحيين Talk about crushing the assignment in terms of turn that microphone on. No, you crushed it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Big That's some high production value. Round of applause for Noor. You, you you nailed it. Honestly, like you you turned this in like the next day early in the morning. I was like I can't pass this girl up. And then I figured I, I had a feeling you guys would have a great chemistry. I figured I'd much rather have you two on my team. I'm so happy to have the both of you. By the way, Noor is un you're still in college, but she's unemployed. So if anyone's looking to hire a super talented person, man, look no further than this lovely oh, young lady. You. Um, honestly, you crushed it. She, she destroyed your video. Her video is so much better than yours. I'm so sorry. Okay. I said that myself. <laughs> your, your video compared to hers is pretty bad, but you sold me with your spirit, with your passion. And um, speed. And your speed. So that definitely, uh, but... Uh, yeah, and talk. you do get along. Yeah, the, we, we, we hung out yesterday for the first time, and uh, I think you guys are getting along pretty well. So that's pretty cool. And again, I really want to say thank you to the patrons because I could not have hired these guys now. I know I said I wanted to hire uh, one intern, but I got to be honest with you guys. As you guys can tell, I really like these two, and I think they both really deserve the position. So I technically can't afford two interns, but uh, like the Patreon money so far, and thank you guys so much, covers one intern, and there's a little bit of extra money left over. Mixed with my YouTube advertising money, I think I can be able to, to pay for, for, for both of them. But guys, look, look at their young, sweet little faces. Do you want me to fire them? If you don't want me to fire them, please, I need new patrons. Join the family, guys. You get some great, you get some early access to videos. You get early extra videos every month. You're going to get behind the scenes for the Joseph Shada documentary. You're going to get your name in the credits for the Joseph Shada documentary. But folks, we don't... Patron, let's do the dance. Do the dance quickly for the pa... Come on, here, let's do it quickly. Do the dance, come on. Do the, come on. Please, I don't want to fire them. I don't want to have to fire them, yo. Please. All right, sit down, sit down. I'm, guys, they're already doing so much work with research. They're already helping so much. They're, 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 they've taken so much off of my plate. Um, I don't want to lose them, but they're super talented. I would love to have them on the podcast as often as possible. I think it will add a new fun layer to the show. As you guys know, I like to mix it up. I don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so they're going to be on the show from time to time. 
They might not be on every week, but I would love to have them on, get their perspective on things. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Oof, so I'm finishing uh, my third year of graphic design, graphic design this year. Okay. Uh, I'm into pretty much everything art related. Uh, it, I, I look like it because I'm very shy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> weird artsy person. We're going to get you out of your shell bit by bit Please, on the show. La- the intern dance helped a lot. It okay, was, great. And by the way, I don't, want, I don't want anyone creeping on either of my interns in the comments. Be respectful. Okay, be nice to my interns. We love them. Only nice comments. Uh, I wanted to ask you guys, like, why did, what made you guys apply to this show? Like, what I think made it's you guys obvious. Apply? We're like fans of the show. That's enough reason. The fact that you're simps of the show, that, that makes me feel very yeah. good. You had to be fans. Is it weird for you guys to be here sitting with me? Like, it's very weird seeing you. I honestly got used to it. Really? Like, it feels like home now. No, no, I haven't. So, but yeah. uh, the reason I applied, it was, uh, it looked very fun. Doesn't look like a job. It's awesome. Like, you know, okay, we we're hanging out. Yeah, the way heads up, stuff. Anthony is not a YouTube person. He is literally like this in real life. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Okay. Well, I'm happy to know that. Well, guys, welcome to the family. I really could not be happier to have you on. Um, pressure's on you, patrons. All right. We don't want to put these talented young Lebanese kids out on the street without income, without a job. But really, uh, this is going to be fun. Uh, they already did a lot of great research, which you guys will see today. Uh, hopefully, you'll be seeing a lot more of them. Uh, they're going to become a lot more hands-on. So uh, you, you guys will see. They're going to be helping me with the graphics. They're going to be helping me with... with uh, with um, thumbnails, they're going to be helping me managing my Instagram with the Discord, a whole bunch of things. So, welcome to the family. They're, they're Lebanon's interns. They're not my interns. They're your interns. They're the Do Not Worry interns. They are our front line of defense against influencers. I can't do it alone, okay? I need my interns, and they are now your interns. You need, you need them to take someone out, okay? You see someone cringe on social media that needs to be stopped. My interns are going to help us take them down. So, uh, thank y'all. Thank you to my patrons. If you want to help support me pay these amazing interns, I- I'm going to stop pushing the Patreon. I know it's getting annoying, but I kind of just have to for now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's it. Okay, guys, so I told you guys we're going to be getting into some more doctor food this week. I apologize in advance for those of you who hate him, but again, it's, uh, it's hard to resist some doctor food content. We got a lot of stuff. First of all, first of all, uh, this was pretty funny. So a couple days ago, he posted this picture on his Instagram. He says, Today, falafel is served on almost every other street in Israel and is very popular throughout the whole world. I'm, sh- I'm guessing he got a lot of shit for this because like just a couple hours later, he shares this story. Dr. Food account was hacked for around four hours. We apologize for any inconvenience. Like the hacking thing i find to be the the funniest excuse because it's like the fakest excuse everyone blames everything on hacking but that's hilarious anyways this is a an insta this, this is so random so my cousin sends me this instagram story of dr food talking about like cheese availability in in the wooden bakery and moulin d'or just listen to how he says moulin d'or <laughs> So, أنا وطالع على بيتي على جلتون بمرق حد الودن والملن. طيب ليش الملن مفول وليش الودن مش مفول؟ الملن، أنتم بتروحوا على الملن شيء؟ رايحين على الملن قبل أنتم؟ الملن is my favorite place to eat. الملن <تصفيق> ملن عادي إيه؟ What the fuck, dude? It's so fucking weird. Uh, it gets grosser. Check this out. This everyone, like, I got sent this video by like 30 people. شو هيدا؟ جاي من اسكتلندا هيدا معلم؟ دايركت يعني هيك كيف بتتاكل هيك؟ اوكي خبريه حلوه شو هيدا؟ Is legitimately make, is making me gag. What is it with all these men on Lebanese social media slurping raw salmon? I've seen too many Lebanese grown men slurping on raw salmon. This is gross, bro. This is Anjed. This is unacceptable. This is hilarious. This I found some other Lebanese chef. This isn't me. I, f- I can't remember from which account. But s- he's talking about Gordon Ramsay. So t- t- ما بعرف هذا يا خيي واحد دكتور جوردن عنزي مدري شو هذا ماني سامع فيه بحياتي شو بيكون مضروبين يعني 
ما حدا يشبهني فيه رح نبايك وما حدا يشبهني بحدا بيقول لي انت بتشبهك جوردن عمزي عمزي رمزي مدري شو اسمه شو عرفني يا اخي اوكي انترنز انترنز Do you guys believe for a second that he doesn't know who Gordon Ramsay is? Obviously not. I don't He's, think he, he doesn't why, even believe why it. Why did he take it as an insult? <laughs> exactly. If people are mentioning you why? in the same sentence as Gordon Ramsay, Anjad, you should take it as like the biggest compliment. It's great. He doesn't deserve it. Even if you're being insulted, he you shouldn't be in the same sentence as Gordon Ramsay. I Gordon love the Ramsay. hashtag. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. What a douche. Best. Can you believe that this guy, this guy who doesn't, who supposedly doesn't know who Gordon Ramsay is? Got verified recently on TikTok. Le verified ola. Le verified verified. Shiftua. Abo mishi bdi etchakar TikTok. Thank you la alkona. Tuna le verified. Bdi etchakar kill team, Doctor Food team, Fardan Fardan, mu killon le share ko bina jah hadi the concept la amna amlo. Bdi etchakar kill al shakhs li da amne, kill mutabeeini. Bhab kun wahed wahed. Thank you la alkon. Shukran la etimam kun. Okay. I love how he says thank you like TikTok like who like it's like the giant Chinese corporation like who are you thanking exactly? Doctor Food, مزبوط إنه أنت عم تقطع بأجزاء العالم. طبعا هذا الحديث مش مزبوط. Doctor Food اليوم موجود ليساعد المطاعم وقت يعمل مقارنة وينتقد مطعم يعني عم يساعده وكل مرة بقولكم نحنا المطاعم اللي عم تقدر عم تغير وهذا هو واحد منه. We're not gonna watch this whole thing, but he's. You see, I, I don't agree with that because, like, what, when he fucks with the restaurant, he's very like dickish about it. He's he's an asshole. Be be behadil al matam. He doesn't give constructive criticism. He just like shits on him, which I don't see how that's helping anyone. That's just turning customers away. So I think, and you know, when he shits on these restaurants, he's doing more harm than than good. I don't know. But there's this one final video, which I found to be pretty. This is from. A Dr. Food fan page. There's a Dr. Food fan page on on uh, on Instagram that Elijah is now following. Uh, this was on there. I'm guessing they took that off of his TikTok. But the fact that he has a fucking fan page, but Hon, he's going through his experience first. Like I love how how he pretends to be like doing something casually, and then someone hands him like a piece of paper. Check this out. Okay, please. Sajal, you have this supplier. We'll bring it from here. 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 We'll bring it تا تا او ماي جاد بعمري 19 سنه كنت كيتشن مانجر بكريبوي كنت مسؤول عن 35 موظف وانا اصغر واحد بيناتهم بعمر 20 سنه فتحت المديزا سرير حد المديزا بجوني بعمر 21 سنه فتحت البريستول جاردن بالشام مطعم بيساع اكثر من 3000 شخص بعمر 22 سنه طلعت على خبر عند ابو نواس فتحت له الايطاليان كوزين بعمر 22 سنه طلعت مع باباكو عمالي فتحت لهم اللبانيس كوزين للبيبلو الصاد بعمر 23 سنه طلعت على البلمندو كيترينج بابو I think he's making all this shit up or something like dude at 22 I wasn't doing shit man like I think I just like graduated college I was like being like I was a waiter like what the fuck dude this is this all sounds like bullshit to me do you guys believe any of this It does it does sound like bullshit a lot of bullshit let's keep going بكون طعمي كل يوم اكثر من 10000 موظف بعمر 24 سنه استلمت بلانيت كيترينج طعمي كل يوم 70000 عسكري اماراتي بشهر رمضان بين فطور وسحور بعمر 25 26 سنه فتحت الفلوبي بالرمال بعمر 27 سنه فتحت سوري فتحت دار السلطاني بانطلياس كنت مدير عام على شركه دار السلطاني بين لبنان والعراق مسؤول عن اكثر من 560 موظف أنا آكل بأكثر من 15 مطعم حول العالم، بارم ب 25 دولة حول العالم. برو، أي ثينك إيفري ونز إيتن ب 15 مطعم بالعالم، أي ثينك ويف أول إيتن إت مور ذان 15 ريستورانت. لا، ذيس إز وات ذا شركة ترانس مات أهم شركة بتبيع برودكت للمطاعم بالشرق الأوسط وأوروبا، طلبتني خصيصا على جزر المالديف لأفتح لهم اللبانيس كوزين هونيك. بدك تعرف أكثر مين أنا؟ أنا أصغر كيتشن مانجر بلبنان كنت كنت وأكثر كيتشن مانجر نجح بهي الشركة. بدك خبرك اكثر من انا؟ بدك تعرف ولا؟ طالع خبرك بعد تعرف 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 بدك خبرك كم مطعم عمل لهم كونسلتنسي بلبنان؟ قد معي كيف؟ على بالي شو؟ آه... عم نحكي بحنا بانطلياس ببيروت دار السلطاني هون ثلاثة التي كي كيتشن فور بالموندو كيتشن بلانيت كيتشن لك خلص حل عني زهقت ست مطاعم ذاتس نوت ا لوت ذاتس نوت ا لوت اي دونت نو مان اي دونت نو ذيس دكتور فود بس you know what? I kept saying he needed to be stopped. 
I'm starting to not like him, but I, I get why he's so popular. Yeah, and it took me two weeks. But it's like his stuff is is like you can't look away. You know what I mean? What do you guys think? Do you get do you get why he's popular or are you like yeah, like I can I can see why. I don't like it, but it's coming, I can't stop looking. Yeah. Right? That's a, like like I'm following him on TikTok now. I don't know what that says about me, but like fuck, he's clever, man. That's the fucking problem. He knows that being a dick, he knows that it's getting shares. You know, when he started out, we need to look at his earlier content. I think you told me like he didn't start off this way. He didn't start off this way. He was much nicer. And then he turned uh yeah, I don't know. That's that's it for Dr. Food for this week, folks. Keep sending us your Dr. Food. Uh, we, we love shitting on him. I know I've been trying to get Daddy Foodie to come back, but maybe maybe not. Maybe Dr. Food is the, the hero we deserve as Lebanese people. Maybe he's... It's like holding a mirror across our face, and this is what we see in the reflection is Dr. Food. He is us, I guess. I don't know, man. I'm confused, but... Yeah, I'm lost. Quick Joseph Shada update. As you guys know, we stand Joseph Shada on this channel. I am working on a Joseph Shada documentary, which we will be hopefully shooting later next month. I'm super excited about it. Again, thank you to my patrons. Um, uh, there was this, this, he found himself in a little, little Twitter controversy over the past couple of days. And I just find that hilarious because it was like just such a, a misunderstanding. So someone shared half of one of Joseph Shada's TikToks. Let me play it for you guys here. And let me tell you up until what point, uh, you know, it got played on Twitter. من سبع سنين جيت لعندك مكسور طلبت منك تحقق لي قصص بتمنى أن تصير بحياتي وهلا رجعت لعندك تخبرك إنه ما تحقق شيء من اللي طلبتهم. They cut that part off. They put those 13 seconds on Twitter and people lost their shit. They thought it was hilarious. I thought it was hilarious too. But then Joseph Shada came back on Twitter to clarify what had happened. And here is what the Shads had to say. There's a video of me about Saint Sherbil circulating on Twitter. Please note that they only posted half of the video and they made it look like I was making fun of Mar Sherbil. I would never disrespect any religion and I concur. I know Joseph Shada wouldn't do that and I think that was unfair. Let us finish. Let's watch the full TikTok. Here is how it, how it ended. But I want to thank you because you have a better story in my life. Today, God opened me a door that I didn't expect before. تعلمت كتير أشياء بهالسنين تعلمت أني زيل الناس الفاسدين من حياتي وأتقرب من الناس الصالحين لكل ملاك حارس موجود بحياتي بشكرك من كل قلبي Honestly, I would like to thank Mar Sherbil for bringing Joseph Shada to me Joseph, I hope I'm one of those people that, you meant, that you're thinking about when you say like al -sadin. I hope I'm one of those people. I can't wait for you guys to meet Joseph Shada. I haven't even met him, folks. If you think I've met Joseph Shada in person, I haven't. I'm, I'm saving that moment for the documentary, our first face-to-face -face encounter. Uh, but I just found that hilarious. It's such a funny TikTok. Like, again, this is why Joseph Shada is so special. Like, who knows if this, if this TikTok was made to be funny or, or we don't know. That's the beauty of it. What, what, what do you guys think about Joseph Shada? What, if you're a fan of the show, you better be a fan of the Shads. I kid. I kid. I we can't Joseph. wait to work with you. We're excited. I've seen him once. Uh, we go to the same university. Okay. I've seen him once. I wanted to go and talk to him, but I'm too <laughs> You were shy. starstruck. I'm st I, hmm. Now you have no reason to be shy. You walk up to Joseph. You tell him that you are a do not worry intern. Okay. Uh, and yeah, that, that, this is a short segment. We just wanted to say hi to Joseph. We, we love you, buddy. Uh, and see you soon for that documentary, my man. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about Tufilux. Extremely cringe LinkedIn next. Now, before someone goes like, hey, Anthony, you're ruining Tufi Luke's chances of finding a job. No, I'm not. Okay, he's doing that to himself, being a fucking asshole on social media. So uh, we're just going to look at his cringe ass fucking LinkedIn, which a, a bunch of people have talked about and have mentioned to me, which we're now going to do a deep dive thanks to the research. Like I couldn't, like, for example, I needed an intern for this because if I go on Tufi Luke's profile, he'll see LinkedIn shows you who's checked your profile. So I couldn't have done this. So... I needed an intern. Perfect. So are you guys on LinkedIn? Yeah. Do you like, I don't have, I rarely use LinkedIn. I very rarely use it. I just update anytime I have a new job just so that my resume, like, do you guys use it? Do you, when find I'm out of a job? Yeah. And that's my go-to place. It's useful. Has it been useful yeah. to you? Yeah. Yeah. It's been very, Dude, I hate LinkedIn and I feel like people are so fake on there, particularly to feel like you, you guys know how, how much of a dick to is, right? We've seen his shit. So let's read some of these, some of these posts and see 
if it feels consistent with the person he is. Dear hiring managers, I have just graduated from my MENG in biomedical engineer. I am 22 years old and went straight after school to university when I was 18. Please stop asking me and my classmates to have 10 years of industry work experience for entry level jobs. It is an entry level job for a reason. Why don't you ask instead if we will give our maximum for the job, if we will commit till the end, or if we are passionate about what we do? Trust me, you will get far better results. Thank you. Now, this got 939 fucking likes. Now, look, again, is he making a decent point? Sure. They are asking a lot of young entry-level positions. I agree. But is Tufi Luke the guy to carry the beacon of justice for young employees? Fuck no. He's the fucking worst. He's a fucking dick. Another one. Since I started posting on LinkedIn, a lot of people have been approaching me and offering me help. I have received many recommendations slash support letters from people I didn't know previously, and this helped me land many interviews in reputable companies. I have realized that this help came be because of my posts and my outspoken thoughts. Unfortunately, not everyone is extrovert and comfortable sharing their ideas. To my amazing network, when you see someone struggling, help him. Oof! Oh my God, Tufilus, I can't, the kindness, the kindness that this man is showing. When you see someone trying to apply for a company and you can recommend him, do it. When you see someone reaching for help and asking questions, be next to him. Man, this is the same guy who was yelling at a 14-year-old kid on, on fucking Instagram Live. Just so you know. P.S. You never know where all of us will be in 10 years. Be nice and considerate. You might ask help back. Great English skills, buddy. What else? Is there anything in particular that's like, that I should look at here? Elijah, you did the research for this. Fifth slide. I would like to share my latest job application experience and my mathematical theory. I applied to a boutique consultant firm as an associate consultant. The process was straight to the point and I did get a job offer at the end. The process took a month in total and I had to go through three interviews and one job simulation. At the end of my last interview with one of the partners in the firm, the partner asked me, what was my salary expectations? I answered with all honesty that I wouldn't expect less than my first year's tuition fee, which was roughly 29,000 pounds. So she looked at me and told me that they are willing to offer 28,000 and that bonuses are quite generous at the firm. I said, okay, I am willing to compromise and I waited for the contract to come through. A week later, the contract did came through. Dude, you're English, you're in fucking England. Anyways, a week later, the contract did came through and one thing that struck my eyes was the fact that it was clearly written expect to work 55 to 60 hours. Normally, this wouldn't have bothered me if the salary was competitive. But hear me out on this. 28,000 after tax in UK is 22,702 net, which equates to 1,892 pounds a month. Now let's average the working hours to 57.5 hours a week, which is 230 hours a month. This means I would be working for roughly 8.22 pounds an hour. The minimum wage in UK is 8.91 an hour, which means theoretically I am paid less than the minimum wage. I said no to the job offer and passed on it. Some people will think I am crazy. Others will think I am a geek. I plainly believe that I am a human being that doesn't deserve to be taken for granted. I know my worth and I wouldn't expect any less. Experience is key to success indeed, but at what cost? Still on the look for a job, applying to seven jobs a day, it is tiring, but I know that the right thing will come my way. Bro, I feel bad for any company that hires Tufi Luke and ends up having to have this fucking guy in their fucking office. Yani, please be remote work. My God. He, there is more, man. I don't know if I want to read any more of these. Let's see. Uh, I applied for a company three months ago. The process was long and rigorous. I had to go. It's the same shit that he keeps reject repeating, basically. Like... He keeps getting rejected, it's so funny. <laughs> Actually, I kind of love that he keeps getting rejected. That is fucking awesome. That's true. It is, it's all about rejection. Being raised right doesn't mean you don't drink, party, or smoke. Being raised right is how you treat people, your manners, and respect. Oh my god, you piece of shit. You pe oof, man. Okay, honestly, don't hire him. If a hiring manager is watching this, and if you Google Tufi Luke's name to see like what he's about, he's a fucking asshole. He's, he's, uh, he's sexist. He's racist. He's offensive just for the sake of being offensive. He uses people for content left and right. You would be making a massive mistake by hiring him. And I don't give a fuck if I'm standing in his way of getting a job because he does not deserve, unless he changes his ways, he doesn't deserve to get a good paid job. Uh, one quick correction that I want to make about, uh, about Tufi Luke. Last week in my episode, I showed a video about him at a barber shop. Here was that video. Sure, guys, <laughs> Kol khara means I love you. <laughs> Great. Like, <laughs> Adam. 
So a lot of you guys reached out and told me that the barber is like the manager of London base in Zala. Weirdly enough, I've been to that London base in Zala and I remember this guy. When I saw the video, it didn't click. Uh, but I do remember him be London base. Uh, now, I don't know if this was shot here in Lebanon, if this was shot, if, if that barber now lives in London in the UK and is cutting hair over there. I have no idea is who can I be to manage on two filuk? Like if he pretended that he didn't speak Arabic, hello. You guys were telling me that he seemed like a maniac and that he's probably in on it, and they're both, they're both in on it. Is that what you guys think? Yeah, he was a bit maniacal owner in a good way. So I'm pretty sure he was in on it. Okay, hello. If he was in on it, I will say like I, I fucked up last week. I didn't know, but. The message that this story sends is still wrong. Like Tufiluk is encouraging his hundreds of thousands of fans. Like he's telling them, if you see someone who's Lebanese, but not speaking Arabic, feel free to tetmanya kuali. Like most people watching this don't know that it's a prank. Don't know that the barber is in on it. So the message that he's sending isn't any less fucked up. It's just that I don't have to feel bad for the barber because he's either fucking with Tufiluk or they're both in on it. I'd like to, in my heart of hearts, I want to believe that the barber is fucking with Tufiluk. And he knows exactly what's going on and who I'm going to do. But I just, I did want to highlight that. Anyways, just like every other Tufiluk segment, I would, that I'd like to end uh, with a fuck Tufiluk. Fuck Tufiluk. Fuck Tufiluk. All right. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. Yalla. Our final topic for today, uh, we're going to be talking about Amaranth. She's an extremely popular Twitch streamer, like ASMR content creator. Uh, she's on OnlyFans. She has like one of the most popular OnlyFans accounts. Uh, look, I'm not gonna lie, she's extremely hot, but her content is extremely weird. And her ASMR is on like another level of weird now. Elijah helped me research a lot of these. Uh, Noor hasn't seen any of these. Noor I can't lie, seen... I did enjoy re researching this. I'm sure, I'm sure this was more fun research than Tufiluk or Dr. Food. Yes, I'm, I'm sure this was more. This is a fun internship. You guys want to be an intern here, you're going to research Amaranth. So we're going we're gonna, to, we made a selection of some of her weirdest... ASMR videos that we're going to react to uh, together. Uh, so first, I think what she's most famous for is her ear licking stuff, uh, which here I, I cut up a minute of this. Let's see how much you guys I downloaded an 18 minute version of this, which I cut up into just 60 seconds. No, I would love to know what you think of this. This is so weird. We're gonna we're gonna stop. That's enough of that. Is this for free on YouTube? So she does this on Twitch, and she for like hours she'll do like a two or three hour just like ear licking stream like this. And these mics, like who makes these weird mics that are shaped like ears for people to lick? Like there's a whole industry behind this, you know? Like it's so weird. So she'll do this for fucking hours. Um, and you can like obviously you can I think on Twitch there's multiple you can like send them tips or money. I'm not sure like it's like super chats on on YouTube, but like, yeah. And, and this is like, this is the most normal thing she does. She, so she'll do, like, she'll dress up as a cow and like do like weird cow ASMR. Like, look at this shit. Like a weird sexy cow. Oh, she's eating grass, apparently. She's feeding. Yeah, this is, this is, okay, now the weirdest one is, I think, is the pigeon. The pigeon is my favorite one.
Uh, can, can you look up how much money she makes? Like, you t how much money is she worth? Uh, we're laughing at her, but she's worth 3.4 million dollars. Dude, this lady's hustling, man. Like, Amaranth, she makes fucking bank, dude. Her OnlyFans is fucking popping. I'm sure she makes tons of money on Twitch. She's one of the most popular, like, hot tub. You know, like, this hot tub streaming thing on Twitch is very popular right now. Very attractive girls. They just sit in a hot tub and they stream for, like, three hours. She's killing it on that as well. Um... I mean, what what it what it's what, what it shows me though is like it, how desperate some people not not desperate to make money, but like it shows you how a lot of people feel like they don't have any other options to make money but to make fucking weird ass just entertainment on the internet. Like that's also what I'm like. Only there's more and more people on OnlyFans, more and more people creating sort of weird niche content for people, sometimes in a very like sexual way, just to try to earn a living because it's so much harder to find a job. Wages are paying less and less. Um, I'm. I don't care. I'm more interested with the audience. I'm not king shaming, but the audience is mostly. What have they gone through? <laughs> it's very like horny young teens, I think, that watch this. There's more pigeon stuff. There's more pigeon stuff. I'm not shaming her at all, but like it's like fucking hustle. Do you do what you got to do to make that money, man? Because it's getting harder and harder to earn a living nowadays, so. Insanity. Fucking insanity, bro. Like, this is crazy. Give us a few months. I think we're all going to be wearing pigeon masks yeah. and dancing in our underwear asking you guys for money. Uh, for Patreon. Anyways. I don't know. Look, I respect Amaranth. I'm a fan of Amaranth. Okay. Uh, obviously, she's attractive as fuck, so that doesn't hurt. Uh, she, she mentioned 5 million Instagram followers. Uh, it's not safe for work account. I don't think we can show that here. Um, I bet you enjoyed researching that, didn't you? Lovely. Noor, would you say you're a fan of Amaranth? Uh, no. No, not, <laughs> not at all? Not interested, no. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Folks, thank you so much for joining me on this very special episode 34 with my lovely interns. The lovely thank you do not worry interns uh as usual folks please take a second to like the video leave a comment please welcome my interns to the channel your interns lebanon's interns folks uh like the video leave a comment please consider supporting me on patreon you will be helping me pay their salaries you'll be if i don't have these interns i don't want to do the show anymore okay i don't want to go back to how it was before i want them to do the research i want them here by my side so uh, support me on Patreon, support my Joseph Shada documentary, and let me thank a couple of patrons before I let you guys go. Pat blonde patrons like Ubay Nahas, Cool Abe, uh, Wasim Hijazi, Spoiled Levantine. Thank you guys so much. Joseph Sarkis, thank you, my dude. And how about some more superhero patrons? Ahmad and Lamia, thank you guys so much. Uh, and Jad, your last name, I always... Jad Ter Termsani. Thank you, Jad Termsani. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are awesome. Uh, interns, did you guys have a good good first episode? We need to thank the Patreons for making us have so much fun. Thank you. Right. Thank awesome. you. Uh, I was so happy to have you guys here. Seriously. Uh, thank you guys so much. I know if the, it's, it's the first time I have them on here. So if some things are a little bit awkward, some technical issues we still need to figure out, we're going to iron out all these details as we go forward. Uh, it's a work in progress, like everything. Uh, but thank you guys again, seriously, so much for watching, for tuning in, as always. And uh, do not worry.